Every so often, the camera comes around, so astonishing, so desired, that production couldn't keep up with demand. They tried to make more, but it was futile. And so they figured, heck, at this point, we might as well just make a new one. Well, now, that camera is here. Let's be honest, you knew it was coming. The Fujifilm X106, the predecessor to the TikTok made me buy it global success, the X105. How did the X105 become one of the most sought after cameras of all time? And how does the X106 build on the five? TikTok be damned because we'll make sure you get the real deal on what makes this camera so great and some honest perspective on when the camera may not actually be the holy grail for you despite your favorite influencer's opinion. Now, if you've been following the X100 trend, you know that this camera could not have come at a better time. Unless, of course, you live in Toronto in the winter. Perhaps not the most photogenic season in this city. And thus, my first stop for this review is to bust out of this dump for greener pastures. And by greener, I just mean one hour south to the beautiful and always charming Buffalo, New York. It's the same dump, but this one is home to Rick James. As with all my reviews, I set out to use this camera based on, well, its demographic, what its design would suggest it's used to be. A fixed lens camera like the X106 is a take anywhere kind of camera. And as such, it came with me to capture my rather banal daily existence, but it was also a trusted travel partner. It hung out on set, at the climbing gym, and my favorite local bakery, and simply just provided good company when I was gazing about wherever I found myself. Yes, of course, it should take beautiful photos, and yes, it should be compact, and yes, it should be easy to use. But all of this is a bit of a moot point if the camera is so technologically garish that you'd be embarrassed to be seen with it. And this is one of the reasons for Fujifilm's camera's popularity. Often cited as the Everyman's Leica, Fujifilm cameras like the X106 are beautiful fashion statements because the best camera you have is the one that you have with you. And the X106 is a real joy to carry around, even if you don't find anything to photograph. And this leads me to my first point, which is design. Fujifilm, among other camera brands, know that their largest competitor is, well, this. So for those of you who are perfectly happy using your phones, how are they going to convince you to use an actual camera. Well, this is where compact cameras like the X106 shine. And it's no small feat that simply wearing it is indeed a statement of fashion and personality. Whereas outside of a SpongeBob case for your iPhone, most phones are not a fashion focal point. The camera's analog style is something Fujifilm is known for, seamlessly matching camera designs from the golden age of film photography. What's less obvious is how its design facilitates ease of use. It's not peppered with buttons and dials. Instead, it's pared down to give the user a simple, straightforward photographic experience. Using this should be as easy, if not easier, than using your smartphone. Equally important are the physics of light and optics. Do smartphones create great photographs? Absolutely, but a tiny lens and a tiny sensor will always be inferior to their larger brethren. Thus, the X106 is a camera that doesn't just look good, but it's also good looking, if you know what I mean. Okay, but Dale, you say, what else can it do? I want specs. Give me specs. No, you can read those online faster than I can tell you, but here, are some more experiential attributes you can't read on a sheet. It's no secret that film simulations are one of the driving forces of popularity with Fujifilm cameras. We even did a video about these simulations that blew up the internet. You should watch it. The X106 now includes Reala Ace, which was first introduced last fall with the GFX102, bringing the total up to 20 simulations, mostly based on actual Fujifilm film stocks. These aren't silly picture or Instagram filters. These are gorgeous color and gamma faithful images that serve to elevate every style of photography. Is it exactly like shooting film? No, but are the photos beautiful? Most definitely. Okay, so even if you've swiped right on this thirst trap of a camera, you're still going to want some substance if it's going to be wrapped around your arm on the daily. And this is where some people find a fixed lens camera a bit of a turnoff. They're most often like, ooh, just that tiny little lens? 
No thanks. But hold up, because it's got some tricks it can do. The lens itself is a fixed 23mm focal length lens, and that never changes, so no magic here. However, they've jammed a 40 megapixel APS-C sensor right behind it, which means that turning the ring will produce some digital crops to the equivalent of a 50 and 70 millimeter full frame field of view from its full resolution 35 full frame field of view. So three astonishing lenses all in one. Except there are some things you should know. If you are a Fujifilm or an APS-C shooter, this may confuse you a little bit because the field of view equivalent should be listed in APS-C numbers, not full frame. It is, after all, an APS-C camera. So if you're wondering why 70 still feels quite wide, well, that's why, because these numbers are full frame equivalent, a bit deceptive for an APS-C sensor. As such, using a 50 millimeter setting is still not like actually using a 50 millimeter lens on an interchangeable lens camera. Let me show you an example. If I compare the X106 to my X-H2S, which has the exact same APS-C sized sensor, my 50 millimeter lens shows a rough equivalent to the 70 millimeter full frame setting on the X106. However, this is a digital zoom. So even at the exact same settings, the actual 50 millimeter lens has considerably shallower depth of field. Adding the 50 millimeter lens extender on the X106 improves the depth of field, but only by a fraction. It is still inferior to the interchangeable lens camera. Is this an issue? Not really. I think most of the photos you'd end up taking with the X106 wouldn't be these kind of super shallow depth of field kind of photos anyways. It's designed as a lifestyle and travel camera mostly. I only mention this so that you understand what's actually happening and what those numbers do and don't mean. We'll talk more about some of those accessories for the camera in a bit, but first I want to quickly discuss the optical quality of the X106 lens. There are a range of reasons to buy and use a fixed lens camera. The top reasons are they are more compact. They are more cost effective, negating the need to buy a full set of lenses. They are often more durable because they prevent water and dust from getting into the sensor. Additionally, the X106's leaf shutter allows for the use of a mechanical shutter at higher sync speeds and less rolling shutter artifacts, but also means better optical quality because the manufacturer can tune the lens and the sensor to be an optimized pair. So let's see how this lens compares to an interchangeable version on my X-H2S. Wide open, the fixed 23 millimeter lens shows outstanding optical quality. No chromatic aberration, no spherical aberration, and no distortion. A Fujifilm equivalent lens on my X-H2S shows some distortion and spherical aberration. However, the 56 millimeter prime shows equal performance to the fixed lens of the X106. So in summary, interchangeable lens quality absolutely can be inconsistent. But with the X106, you're gonna get top quality optics with every single shot. And let's make a quick pit stop to discuss video on the X106. As with some of the recent cameras from Fujifilm, this camera comes with the ability to shoot some very lovely video. However, it's not the core purpose of the camera. So there are some things you should know. Number one, this is not a vlogger's camera. There's no way for you to see the screen. The screen simply just tilts, it doesn't flip out. And thus you can't really check your framing unless you have a separate monitor or you're using the app. And additionally, I have a lot to say about the app. I'm gonna hold off on that, but just to say that when you're recording from the app, it locks you into HD and at 30 frames per second. The app is fantastic for downloading photos onto your phone. Everything else, mm, not so crazy about it. The camera, however, does allow you to shoot 10-bit 422 at 6.2K. But more importantly, it shoots 4K in HQ mode, which downsamples the 6.2K, something my beloved X-H2S doesn't even do. However, no matter what you choose, the largest bitrate you are going to get access to is 200 megabits per second. Now compare that with the 360 or 720 megabits in my X-H2S, and this can make a bit of a difference, especially when shooting F-Log2. Additionally, the audio port is a dual purpose microphone and remote release, just like the 5 was. This means that it's a 2.5 millimeter jack and will require an adapter from your regular 3.5 millimeter. 
Additionally, there is no headphone out, though you can monitor audio through the USB port with an adapter or through HDMI when using an external monitor. Overall, of course the camera produces excellent video for either personal shooting or social media videos, but it's really not built for serious video shooting or for those filming themselves. Which is a shame because the X106 includes a three-stop internal neutral density filter, another benefit of a fixed lens camera. Let's now turn to some accessories available for the camera. There are some really wonderful ones that were also available for the 5. The one I love the most is the leather cover, though it's not without its imperfection. Now, it protects exquisitely, it looks sharp, and will match most outfits. My only complaint is that if you want to keep the top handy, there's really no way to just keep it connected to the camera. You have to take it off, and then you have to find a place for it. If you don't have big pockets, then there's really no place to put it. There are as well a couple other accessories of note. One is a simple protective filter, which is an advisable purchase seeing as a broken filter is way cheaper to replace than a broken fixed lens. However, once installed, there is no cap for it. The supplied cap no longer securely fits, and the leather case still works, uh, but brutishly. The only solution here is to buy an aftermarket 49 millimeter lens cap. As mentioned previously, like the X105, the 6 also works with extension lenses. These will screw onto the fixed lens and simply offer a wider or a more telephoto field of view. And as demonstrated earlier, one extends to a 50mm equivalent, whereas the other opens your 35 to a slightly wider 28mm full frame equivalent field of view. The optics remain excellent, but once installed, the camera is really no longer that cute compact number you signed up for. However, if you can afford to add them, then I really do think it's a worthwhile endeavor. Is the X106 worth the hype? Well, that depends. If you are looking for a camera that you can unashamedly take with you everywhere, and that makes beautiful filmic quality images, as well as being outrageously simple to operate, then yes, I think what the X100 is and does places it in a league of its own. But if you are looking for a very multi-purpose camera or something for social media content use like vlogging, I really don't think this is the best buy. What it's good at, it's great at. And I'll be honest, I would absolutely love to own this camera. And maybe one day I will, if you just don't tell anybody on TikTok about it. All right? Lips sealed. As always, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this channel for more great and entertaining videos like this one. Please comment in the comment section down below. For me, for now, I'm out. Peace. Can't forget this.